Hi there, my name is Chris Hopkinson. I'm a professor of geography and a research chair at the University of Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada. Today, we're at the West Castle Field Station in the Canadian Rockies, which is also in the headwaters of the Old Man River Basin. Over the course of my career, I've been extremely fortunate to be able to travel, work and study many uh, mountain environments around the world, including the, the Swiss Alps, uh, South Africa, South America, Australia and here in the North American Rockies. What I'd like to do today is to talk about some of the reasons that mountains are so important to us uh, and also to introduce one of the projects that we have going on in my lab where we're trying to better understand how the mountain environments are changing around us and why they're so precious. Now of course I'm going to be referring to the eastern slopes uh, of the Canadian Rockies um, but what I'm about to say is really true of all mountain environments around the world. So what is it about mountains that makes them so special? Well, to answer that would be a whole series of lectures in itself. But for now, I'd like to stress three key physical attributes that distinguish mountains from other landforms. First, the high altitudes of mountain peaks mean that they experience different climatic conditions to surrounding lower elevations. So, of course, this is why we see glaciers and snowpack in alpine zones and a thinning of vegetation as we move up and out from the valley bottoms. Second, the complex relief of mountain ranges means there is a much greater surface area of land than we might imagine when we look down on a map. This complexity of folds, ridges and valleys exposes a rich diversity of geological strata, soils, land covers and habitats, all of which makes mountain environments the ideal hunting ground for a wide range of natural resources, be they forest products, fossil fuels or mineral and animal resources and so on. And third, related to the first two, is that the extreme climatic gradients of temperature and precipitation from valley to peak mean that mountain environments are highly sensitive to changes in climate or other disturbances. So while a gradual change in climate may be imperceptible to us, we might first witness its manifestation in the receding glaciers, rising tree lines, or increased wildfire frequencies. For these reasons then, the mountains are incredibly valuable to us as humans, not just for their easy access to natural resources, or as indicators of environmental change, but also for their recreational and their spiritual values. So whether it's for adrenaline sports or a peaceful hike in the backcountry, or even to get us closer to the heavens, the mountains are revered for their restorative impacts that they have on our well-being. But there is one resource synonymous with mountain environments that I've barely touched upon. And like the air we breathe, it is critical to sustain life. And of course, that critical resource is, all around us, water. In Alberta, most of our cities draw water from rivers that originate as snow or glacier melt in our forested and mountainous eastern slopes. This is why we often refer to the mountains as our natural water towers, and why we recognize the need for source water protection of these areas. With changes in climate, and the many land cover changes that have occurred due to resource extraction, wildfire, insect outbreaks, and other successional processes, there is a growing concern that the water resources we have come to rely on over the last century may not be available in the future. Aside from the obvious impacts like loss of meltwater from receding glaciers, there are many less obvious impacts associated with things like shifts in snowpack accumulation and melt patterns, or as well, changes in the natural water balance as lands are cleared or as tree lines advance. At the University of Lethbridge, we're tackling some of these problems with government, university and private sector partners by fusing this kind of field monitoring technology with satellite and airborne remote sensing data. And we're using these data in combination so that we can better model changes in the landscape and changes within the water resources of these environments so that we can understand the implications for the future. Using high-tech airborne laser scanners and satellite optical imaging and on-the-ground sensor networks, we will model changing snowpack and runoff properties across the eastern slopes. These are the headwaters that supply water to the cities of Lethbridge, Calgary, Red Deer, Edmonton and Fort McMurray. Our goal is to develop an integrated snow and vegetation modeling framework to inform future water management and policy in Alberta. But while the impetus for this research is to understand, forecast and protect our precious mountain water resources, 
A unique and valuable output of this project is our strong emphasis on public education and outreach. With partners in the private sector, our team will use online immersive digital twin technology to bring these dynamic mountain environments and simulations into the classroom and as well, we hope, into the living room. As the project progresses and we meet important milestones, I will release some of this information on the YouTube channel, so stand by for that. This will be things like journal articles, conference presentations or digital assets. For the time being, please check out this short excerpt of an immersive 3D digital twin environment that our partner Fluid Planet recently released for the Writing on Stone Park and Milk River floodplain. This dataset was put together using three-dimensional data captured by my lab using airborne LiDAR and drone technology. Similar environments will be created for Eastern Slope's headwaters with real-time connectivity to telemetered weather data or other digital data streams that can help educate and aid in management decision-making. So, I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or feedback, please post them in the comments below or just send me an email. Um, thanks for your attention and uh, stay tuned. Bye for now.